awakening commonly includes transcending the human dimension of existence, at least initially. Body, mind, and ego are all transcended. This is essential, since our egos do not awaken. We need to be able to kind of let them go. We do, however, also have a physical body, a consciousness, and a human life that exists in both time and space and is always becoming. For our ego mind, it is difficult to comprehend becoming, which is without the need for fulfillment, the feeling of anxiety, or the feeling of unworthiness. Yet it really is unfolding all around us. Although existence is a process of being, everything in nature takes its time becoming. In a way, a pine tree is already complete when it is a seed. The whole pine tree is contained in the seed. In a sense, the seed contains all of the pine trees. Everything is included, nothing is missing. There is the potential for roots, trunks, branches, and pine needles. A single little seed has the genetic potential to grow into a 150 feet tall pine tree. If the seed experienced its own unique spiritual awakening, it would feel whole and realize it didn't need to change from who it was. For a human to go through that is a significant thing. If the circumstances are ideal, the seed simultaneously begins to sprout and set down roots. It basically realizes its potential as it grows a trunk, spreads its branches and needles towards the sun, and so forth. The potential of the tree is continuously being realized throughout its whole existence, up until the point at which it runs out of energy and is used as fertilizer for the next seed. One of the analogies I like to give is this, if we grasp what is always whole and unfolding, we can actually have both of these things happen, always unfolding your potential and always unfolding your completion. And it's not simply a personal thing. Such realization does not come from the ego. Rather, it is a realization of one's true nature, which is the true nature of all things and creatures. When the Buddha first awoke, he reportedly exclaimed, I, and all beings everywhere have simultaneously achieved the ultimate liberation. Of course, it makes little sense if he were expressing that from an ego or even a rational perspective. Hardly everyone who lives nearby will suddenly become enlightened just because this guy Buddha, who was sitting beneath the tree, experienced profound enlightenment. But the truth is that what I truly am, what you truly are, and what the cosmos truly is, are one and the same. Also, true nature as a whole awakens when true nature is expressed by an individual. So that's how it feels, and that's significant because it's crucial for us to recognize our own completion and wholeness as well as for others to do the same. If it's a true realization, true nature, not my true nature, as in just me, will be awake. It has that characteristic as well, because there is still a hint of an individual there. But the gift has to be seen everywhere. It is incredibly lovely to see people and things for who they truly are, but it can also be incredibly perplexing to see someone or something you really dislike for who they truly are. That doesn't imply that you suddenly come to share their opinions. You can still disagree, but it's different to do so and only see how wrong they are in your opinion, as opposed to disagreeing and seeing that they are also expressions of your true nature, whether conscious or unconscious. It's kind of wonderful every now and then to remind oneself that you can't be anything other than who you are. And there's completion from the very beginning, even though it's just plain understanding. That is also true nature, 
despite the fact that we often struggle, search, and feel bewildered. That is comparable to a seed pushing aside dirt particles to reach the sunshine as it sprouts and moves towards the surface. Sometimes you sense yourself trying harder, and that is a manifestation of your true nature. Hence, the desire and the search are manifestations of true nature. And if you're going through a tough period, thinking about it might not be a bad idea. When you are having difficulty, you don't somehow cease becoming who you really are. Everything starts with the smallest idea or simplest standpoint. Like I said, the simpler and more focused your spiritual practice is, however it may be, the better. How much a software program can pack into its simplest form determines how valuable it is. It's comparable to a scientist trying to formulate an equation that condenses the most information into the simplest expression, while still taking into account the maximum quantity of data. As a result, you want something that contains as much wisdom, vision, and love as possible in its most condensed, useful form when you try to distill the enormity of true nature into a really simple application. I frequently just remark, abide as consciousness, that's all, keep it simple, 